<clears throat> now, Thomas Edison once said, All you need to invent something is imagination and a pile of junk. And looking around here, I can see I've got lots of junk. But as far as imagination goes, uh, well, I might just copy someone else. So in the spirit of Thomas Edison, I'm going to make a light bulb out of a, a glass jar. An assortment of copper wire. Some mechanical pencil lead. Two-part epoxy. Some methylated spirit. And I'll also be using this 12 volt desk lamp transformer. I pulled it apart and I put alligator clips in replace of the original light globe. Nails. Teflon tape. The first thing to do was to drill two holes in the lid of the jar for the nails. The nails are going to be the conductors that go down into the jar to the filament. And we don't want the nails shorting out on the lid, which is also made out of metal. So I'm wrapping Teflon tape around the nails. Teflon has a pretty high melting temperature, so should be okay. To hold the nails in place and to keep the lid airtight, I'm using two part epoxy glue, which I think like decomposes at over 300 degrees or something, or Maybe that's only JB Weld. Is it JB Weld? I didn't want to use JB Weld because I was worried that it would be a bit conductive as it's got still powder mixed in with it. So this cheap epoxy should be fine. I let that set overnight. Now I'm cutting some grooves in the end of the nails with a hacksaw for the filament to rest in. Now this filament, which you might have guessed by now, is the mechanical pencil lid. I put the pencil lid in the slot and then wrap some fine copper wire around it, which I had removed that non-conductive coating off, to keep it in place. I broke a lot of lead doing this. It's hard to wrap a piece of wire around a 0.5 millimeter stick of graphite. So here is a short test of the graphite or the pencil lid running outside of the jar. It never lasts very long before the graphite and carbon burns up thanks to all the oxygen. So I'm going to remove all the free oxygen by burning it before it has a chance to burn the filament just by burning methylated spirits in the jar and closing the lid. It's not a perfect solution as it doesn't only produce carbon dioxide but also water after burning but it is still better than free oxygen Now I have to get the ratio of alcohol to air just right as I don't want alcohol heating up in the jar making a dangerous glass pressure vessel. I want it all gone after I close the lid. I didn't do any calculations for this, just lots of experimentations. Burning inside the jar also has the benefit of reducing the air pressure in the jar. Less air on the filament is better and it also helps with the possibility of exploding jars. This glass may crack in the heat. Okay here we go. Powering on probably what is most the most dangerous 12 volt light bulb ever made. Put some lights off, face shield down Oh, what's happening? How long will it burn for? Still going. I'm 
pretty happy with that. I wonder if it will explode or something. Oh, it's gone. Ah, oh, well. Well, I was hoping for it to run for a few minutes, and it did look very promising, as the light it was producing was steady and constant, telling me that the graphite wasn't burning up. As you can see in this example, the light intensity changes as the graphite gets thinner and then stops. But it's still broke inside the jar. One reason why is that the cheap epoxy I used became soft with the heat. So the nails started moving about and breaking the hot delicate lead, which was Surprising, I didn't think epoxy melted after it cured, but I stand corrected. Anyway, I don't know if I could be bothered improving it. It's a bit of a waste of time, really. Oh, and if you want to make one of these dangerous things, consider me a bad influence. <laughs>